Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. Here's the mercy of God. And and you need to see this as good and loving and merciful. It will all be in accordance with your ability. The Lord is not going, I, I, the Lord through me, as an apostle, is going to tell you some things you are expected to do. But they'll all be within your wheelhouse. All these things that the Lord is calling you to do are things that the Lord has equipped you to do. And that doesn't mean that they won't be uncomfortable. That doesn't mean that there won't be moments where you have to exercise faith and it feels above your pay grade or outside of your comfort zone. But even when you think it's outside of your wheelhouse, the Lord wouldn't command you to do it unless he was going to equip you. He either has equipped you or he will equip you, but he has ensured that you will be able to obey. The Lord never asked, that's it. For Timothy, same principle applies for you. The Lord has not asked you to do anything that you can't do. He hasn't. And that includes, that's, that's his law. Everything that I talked about in our liturgy leading up to the sermon, the law of God, no one can perfectly obey the law of God. That's why we all need a savior. However, however, we've got to be so careful with that, guys. We've got to be so careful with that. We, we do this in our family worship all the time. Like every other day, because we, we do Bible verses one morning, and then we do catechism questions. And when we do our catechism questions, it goes something like this. Some of you have heard me do this before, but some of you haven't, so I'll, I'll do it again. Um, so we, we do a number of questions, but they build, and they build, they build, and it's comprehensive. Eventually, we get to this question. Uh, will God ever die? The answer is no. God lives forever. And then I say, will you die? And the answer is yes. And I say, how many times will you die? Once, and then comes the judgment. It is appointed to man that he should die once, and then comes the judgment. Will you pass through the judgment, or will you be destroyed in the judgment? I will pass through the judgment. Why will you pass through the judgment? Because I trust in Jesus. Yes, my Baptist kids say, I presently trust in Jesus. I don't know if they're regenerate, but we're teaching them to say, I trust in Jesus. We're training them as Christians, okay? So I trust in Jesus. That's why I'm gonna pass through the judgment and not be destroyed in the judgment. Then the next question is, those who trust in Jesus, and Olive will finish it and say, love Jesus. And those who love Jesus, obey Jesus. How many commandments does Jesus have? Two commandments. What are they? That you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like it, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. How do we obey Jesus first and greatest commandment to love the Lord our God? The answer is by obeying the first four of the 10 commandments. How do we obey Jesus' second greatest commandment to love our neighbor as ourself? By obeying the next six of the 10 commandments. And then we go, what are the 10 commandments? And they list out the 10 commandments. Then the final questions move us from the law to the gospel. And here are the final questions and it's pertinent for what we're looking at now. The final questions are this. Has anyone ever kept the law of God perfectly? And the answer is, No, since the fall of Adam, no man has uh, kept the law of God perfectly except Jesus. That's true. But then the next question is, if that's true, then what good is the law of God? And that's where a lot of evangelicals drop off. They wouldn't verbally say it, maybe some of them would, but but implicitly, kind of hush-hush, their answer would be, what good is the law of God? No good. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. That's an evangelical mantra as it pertains to the law of God. Which again, is heresy. That's antinomianism. That's lawlessness. That's not Christian. It's not Christian. And it is commonplace in evangelical Christian churches to despise the law of God. We're no longer under the law, we're under grace. Yeah, that means for the Christian, you are no longer under the law as your judge. You are judged on the basis of grace. That does not mean that the law of God doesn't, doesn't, um, ab- that it doesn't have anything to do for you. Of course you need to obey God's law. Not for salvation and the law of God, you won't be judged by that standard. You'll be judged, you've already been judged because Christ has been judged on your behalf and you've been united to him by grace through faith. That's what it means that you're not under law. That does not mean that, that, oh, well, as Christians, we're not under law. And what that means is that the law has no basis. So once you, think about the logic for a second. That is so dumb. It makes me mad. And I think it's a righteous indignation. I could be wrong. Maybe it's some flesh. But think about that logic. Um, here, here's the whole map of Christianity, right? Here's the big idea, the 30,000-foot view of Christianity. Once you come to Christ, then you don't have to obey Christ. 
in a nutshell, that's literally, that's, that makes no sense. That's the beauty of the gospel is this, that if you believe the gospel, you can sin more. Doesn't the apostle Paul address that? Right? Some are saying, and slanderously charging us, saying, that well, let us do evil, that, that grace may abound. No. By no means. Their judgment is deserved. That's the, that's the way the Apostle Paul deals with this in Romans chapter 3. That is, that's insane. That is insane. So we go further in our catechism. Does the law of God, what, what use is it? Right? Has anybody kept the law perfectly? No. Since the fall of Adam, no man has kept the law perfectly except for Jesus. Then what good is it? And the answer is that the law of God shows us our need for a Savior and it teaches us our duty. And then I add this question because I'm constantly adding questions. Sometimes I like catechisms and Keech's catechism and then sometimes I'm like, ah, I, I, don't, I think mine's better and I'm probably being arrogant. But. So then I add and revise a little bit and I say, okay, great. So there's two uses of the law. Even though we can't keep it perfectly, there's still a benefit to the law. It shows us our need for Christ and for the Christian, it shows you your continual need for Christ and it teaches us our duty. It shows us the path where to go, how to respond in love by obedience. But then the question that I add is this, um, will we ever reach a place in this life where we perfectly obey God's law as Christians? The answer is no. But the next question is, but can we objectively improve in obedience? And that's where I think so many evangelicals, they, 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 maybe it's subconscious, maybe they haven't thought about it, but, but they imply implicitly, their, their theology, it implies that we've never been able to perfectly keep the law, we never will be able to perfectly keep the law, and both of those are objectively true statements. But then the third implicit statement that they're making is, and we can't even improve in keeping the law. That is unbiblical. That denies the doctrine of sanctification. That denies the mortification of sin. That denies being further and further conformed to the image of Christ. That denies, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That says that all these things are impossible. They're carrots that God holds out but that we'll never be able to reach. That is a lie. And it's, and it's a destructive lie. It's a damning lie. It's a disheartening and discouraging lie. You're not going to reach a place of sinless perfection in this life even as a born-again believer. But by God's grace, it's worth trying. Why? Because you can and you will. Not just you can. If you're a Christian, you will improve. You will. That's one of the marks of a Christian. One of the marks of a Christian is how do we know they've been justified? Because they're being sanctified. And what is it to be sanctified? It's growing in Christ-likeness. It is progressively and continually being further and further conformed to the image of Christ. It is getting better. Yeah, we are Christians. We believe people can get better. We believe in repentance. Repentance means change. We believe. We are, we're Christians. We're the people who, who are the people of hope. The people of hope. If I was to define the word hope in the simplest form, I would do it like this. Hope is the belief that things can change. What is it to be hopeless but to think that nothing matters? The fates are sealed. Nothing can change. Nothing can improve. Nothing can get better. That is the antithesis of the Christian faith. The Christian faith is we believe that things can change because we believe in a God who changes sinners into saints. We believe in a God who removes hearts of stone and replaces them with a heart of flesh. We believe in a God who raises the dead. We believe that people can change, not because we have hope in humanity in and of itself, but because we have hope in Christ. And he changes people. And he is changing people. And he is changing, brothers and sisters, you people. You're better. You are. You are better today than you were last month when I was preaching to you. You are. Are you perfect? No. Do you have sin to confess and repent of? Yes. Do you need to cling fast to Jesus day by day by day? Yes. But is it pointless? No. Is there no hope of improvement and sanctification? In the, no. That's anti-Christian. That's not Christian. So be reformed. 
be confessionally reformed and hold to the third use of the law and don't be an antinomian. Wait, 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 real quick, before you go, do me a favor, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the bell so you'll be notified with all our new content as it comes out on a daily basis. And if you're willing to support this ministry, you can do so by going to rightresponseministries.com slash donate. Thanks so much. God bless.